Hey, good evening, and welcome to another episode of Music That I Have and You Probably Don't. Today, we are going to examine the wonderful album on Amherst Records, put out by the one, the only, Evil Knievel. Uh, let's just uh, start it at the beginning. There's a lot to get through here, and I'm going to kind of jump around on this album, but there are some moments to savor. <laughs> There's a sea of people, perhaps 200,000 of them. They're gathered along the jagged edge of an awesome chasm. It's close to a mile wide and almost as deep. In the center of it all is a man, dressed in white leather and strapped into a rocket-like machine that is poised on its launching ramp. A gleaming red, white, and blue missile aimed at the other side. A tap on the helmet. Someone mumbles, good luck. The machine is detonated, and he's on his way. Science fiction? No. Because Evil Knievel, the most famous daredevil in the world today, is actually going to jump Idaho's incredible Snake River Canyon on his sky cycle. Why? We might just as well ask why Columbus sailed off to what everyone at the time thought was certain doom. Why Charles Lindbergh crossed the Atlantic in a single-engine plane. Why the astronauts shot for the moon. Each of them, like Knievel, possessed, or was possessed by, the desire and the ability to do something no one else had ever done before. Unlike a fighter or racer who competes to win against another fighter or racer, Knievel has only one ever-present competitor, death. to you, ladies and gentlemen, Evil Knievel. Thank Evil, you. I, Thank you. I know there are a lot of questions about a lot of different things. Let's, let me just ask you one quick question about the facts. Uh, how far is it across the Snake River at the jumping point? It's uh, somewhere between a half a mile and three quarters of a mile. It's a big canyon. It's a long way across, a long way down. What kind of a vehicle are you going to use to, to go across that half three quarters of, or a mile? The machine is uh, what I call a sky cycle. A sky cycle is not a motorcycle. I never did say I was going to jump it on a motorcycle. That was the fault and misinterpretation of the press. The vehicle is one of two that there are left in the world. There were three. One is at the bottom of the Snake River. We fired a test shot out there some months ago and never did find it. The vehicle looks like a bottle of beer. Does not have a tail on it. Has two fins on both sides. And has an open cockpit. It will not fly. If anybody thinks it will, I'll give a million dollars to any United Airlines or TWA pilot can get in and fly across that canyon. It's strictly a rocket, and it puts out 5,000 pounds of thrust, 15,000 pounds of jet horsepower, and 3,000 pounds of total impulse. It'll run 108 feet in less than two seconds from a dead stop and will reach a speed of 150, 160 miles an hour. It'll run 200 yards in something like six and a half or seven seconds and reach a speed of 350 miles an hour. Wow. What it does is put reverse G-force on me. Yeah. Reverse G-force is when you do not black out, you red out. Oh, yeah. And when you red out, the blood rushes to your head. You don't black out to where it leaves your head and then puts you unconscious. Mm. 
When you read out your hemorrhage, a slight bit at five and a half or five Gs is which what I'm going to have. There's a positive G-force and a negative G-force. There's a red out and a black out. In this thing, I'll red out. I won't black out because I'll have the reverse G-force. I'm going to wear a G-suit when I jump that canyon. And, uh, of course, I'll have a helmet on. I will not wear a parachute. That's as the plans are today. I won't wear a parachute. Mm. The vehicle itself, the X-2, will have a parachute on it. And 18 seconds after I'm fired, that parachute will open. If that fails, the timing device, the 18-second timing device, after it tips nose down and starts down, there's an arm that's supposed to trip and open it. If that fails, mm. then I have a trigger release that I can pull mm. if I'm conscious. So what we have is a backup system for a backup system for a backup system for the parachute system. And then I have two backup systems of my own besides those three that I just mentioned to you that I'm putting in the thing that the engineers know nothing about. The fourth backup system is the Lord's Prayer, and the fifth one is when I spit at the canyon wall face to face. The parachute systems don't open. So that's, uh, that's about the extent of the canyon. And there is about 28 minutes of this press conference that he has uh, on here, which is, um, this is all a big build-up to the uh, jump of the Snake River Canyon, which hilariously he didn't end up making. Um, but uh, let's skip ahead, shall we? Uh, at the very end of this side of the album, we get this. In the back of it, I was looking out through this glass top, and I got to thinking about the question why that people ask badly in Las Vegas and I just got back on crutches and was able to walk and I weighed about 130, 135 pounds. Mm -hmm. I remember they'd take me over there and they'd stand me up and they'd say, show the film of him jumping. They'd show the film and I'd stand there by my motorcycle and everybody come up and look at me. I wasn't very well known then by a lot of people. And they'd say, why do you do it? What's the matter with you? Why do you keep on doing it? Nice gate pulled. And I, you know, I'd say, well, you know, money's good or this, that, or I didn't know how to answer them, really. I got so tired of getting asked why I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I was on my way back to Los Angeles to perform for a man named Al Dobrich, who had the Dobrich International Circus at the time, and I was trying to get stronger so I could perform for him. And I remember when I was coming back across Texas, I think it was, and I had what they call an Oldsmobile Vista Cruiser station wagon. I had a glass top, and I was really delirious almost to a point that my temperature was so high and I was laying in the back of it and I was looking out through this glass top and I got to thinking about the question why that people asked me and I said to Ray, I said, give me a notepad. Well, that's concerning writing a song but I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket so I uh, wrote this poem and I wrote it in a matter of an hour or two hours just before it got daylight it was done and I think that it answers the question for every man and woman on the face of this earth at the end of it, why you do what you do and why I do what I do in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a very simple thing. And the poem uh, goes like this. I'll do it for you. It Let's read along, shall we? seems that everywhere in this world I go, no matter who or what I know, the people, they look, and most of them stare. I wonder if they really care. You see this cane with his golden crown. Some of them smile, but most of them frown. I hear them laugh, and I see them cry. No matter what, they all ask why. Why? Well, I'm just like you. And you. And you. And your wife. We all have a special purpose in life. And my way of life, I'm glad that I found, for like you, I too make the world go round. We're all alike. Oh, yes, we are. We all have a dream on some faraway star. For me, when it's over and done at the end of the day, my men go to relax, but I go to pray. For I know that tomorrow, some other place I'll have that jump again to face each time I was hurt they all said 
That guy is lucky that he's not dead. And they were right. But I wanted to get up. To try it again. I kept telling myself that I knew I could win. So I'd close my eyes, and to the Lord I would pray. Oh, help me, God. Let me walk someday. And he did. Every stitch on every scar has just brought me closer to my dream of power. To be a man and to do my best to stand alone is my only quest. Success is a term that has broad use. For you and I to have none in life, there's no excuse. For you to do what I do is not right. But for me, it's not wrong. What I've been trying to tell you all along is that it's got to be. So, if you wonder why, the answer to that is that just like you, I've got to be me. Well, it is what it was, Mr. Longfellow. Uh, we're going to move ahead on the second side of this album. We've got a song that is not sung by him, but is in tribute to him. The song is simply called The ba Ballad of Evil Knievel. Of tomorrow. His body shows the scars. Has dealt his way. The strong yet simple man, riding on the edge of danger, secure in prayers that God has heard him say. more verses of this song to go, which always ends with that same chorus, so we're just going to let it end there, and skip ahead, he does hit a kid, <laughs> at one point, find it, the opportunity, Knievel was in Los Angeles, where he had the opportunity to be interviewed by about 60 children, oh yeah, the resulting dialogue shows a surprisingly warm and sensitive side to the man, mm -hmm as he responds to the children's curiosity. Now, I'll introduce myself. First of all, my name is Jerry Fogel. I'd like to welcome you to an afternoon with Evil Knievel, an informal question and answer session. We're going to have a good time asking Evil everything you can think of to ask him. A lot has been said, a lot has been written about this daredevil of a man who on September 8th of this year will attempt to leap the Snake River Canyon in Idaho. 
is what mentioned might be termed for about the most dangerous feat of daring in our record. time. To find out more about this historic jump and the man himself, I'd like to introduce to you. Everyone, meet Evil Knievel. Thank you. How are you, Evil? Good. How are you kids doing? Right. You all motorcycle riders? Yeah. Huh? You ride a mini bike? You don't, do you? Do you? You wear a helmet? Do you? All the time? Never ride without it? Come here, I want to show you something. Come here for a minute. Stick your hand out here. Does that hurt? Stick your other hand out. Does that hurt? Stick your leg out here. Does that hurt? Stick your head over here. Does that hurt? <laughs> you wear a helmet whenever you ride that motorcycle. He's abusive to children. All right. This has been going on for quite some time. Let's just bring it on the canyon and ever drive it in Indianapolis. However, I consider driving the Indy 500 every bit as dangerous as jumping the canyon, I'll tell you. Mm -hmm. Every bit is dangerous. Have you ever tried to the Not after this jump, because a mile is a mile in Idaho, Utah, Arizona, Colorado, California, or anywhere. And when I jump this mile, nobody will ever say I couldn't have jumped the Grand Canyon, I'll tell you. In fact, I'm going to jump so far that I file a flight plan from Twin Falls, Idaho, to Salt Lake City, Utah. That's how far I'm going to jump. <laughs> Evil, our time is up, and I just want to tell you that I'm sure that 100% of the people in this room really want to see you make, and you'll be looking for you on the other side of that oh, Grand Canyon. So. Snake River. I hope so, and I hope Good to see you all after the jump is over. Thank you. Good luck to you. Yeah, right down, right into the river. I remember. I was the age of the kids. Let's bring it home. Knievel so. talks of the future, if he has one. Mm. After the canyon jump is over, I would like to retire for quite some time. Mm. I'd like not to have to live with that lump in my throat and that knot in my stomach like I have for eight solid years. Uh, I'm looking forward to the day that that machine drops down on the other side of that canyon. I'm looking forward to the day that I can get out of it and grab two fistfuls of Idaho dirt and thank God Almighty I'm still alive and uh, come back across the other side go home with my wife and kids and retire for a while and remember something. If I miss the jump and I hit the wall head on, if I'm not around anymore, I'm just going to get somewhere quicker where you are all going someday. And I'm going to sit there and have a beer and I'm going to wait for you. Don't bring back that song. It's horrible. Oh. Well, thanks, folks. This has been another episode of music that I have, and you probably don't. Oh, you might, but you probably don't. Words of inspiration. <laughs>